What's up, what's up, what's up? You're welcome to the Digital Assets Show on your one and only Pop Central Channel 189 DSTV, the only platform that discusses Bitcoin, cryptocurrency uh, on national television all over 17 West African countries. My name is Oluwa Shagun Ori Ofe, Oluwa Lojaju, Hustle Alaji. I'm live right here uh, to educate your mind, stimulate your mind, um, and to let you know that fiat is burning very, very fast and to encourage the SEC to quickly give us you know, license for cryptocurrency trading. <laughs> you and I want to double our money, I know, right? Yes, well, welcome to that show that educates you on the money go up technology. And of course, everything that you can monetize that can be categorized as digital assets. But Bitcoin, I ain't consign me, sha, because now that one day is easy to convert to cash real quick. What's up? How's your weekend going? How has your weekend started? Um, what's the market cap of Bitcoin today? You know, that's one um, very important thing we must discuss every time we come through like this. Today, Bitcoin price is $67,606. And the market cap still stands strong at $1,333,512,000,000. If Bitcoin were to be a company, it would be at number... If Bitcoin were to be a company, Bitcoin would be at number seven. Number seven, bigger than Meta platforms. That's Facebook and everything that they own. Bitcoin is bigger than Berkshire Hathaway. That's Warren Buffett's company. You know Warren Buffett, right? Yes, Bitcoin is bigger, 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 bigger than JP Morgan Chase, Tesla, Visa. I'm talking about Visa. Of course, Bitcoin is way bigger than ExxonMobil. Bitcoin is just a 14 years old um, digital asset class, uh, best performing digital asset class, as a matter of fact. And if it were to be a company, you can tell, you know, that in, 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 in less than 18 years, look at what it has done. A 14 years old child, now still small Pekino, he never even finished secondary school, except he's an ex except, exceptional genius. There are only seven companies bigger than Bitcoin on earth. And these companies, as we speak, uh, are not less than 20, 25 years. And it took them even way more than two decades to reach the one trillion market cap. The first company on top of the food chain uh, when it comes to companies' ratings is Microsoft. They have lots of digital assets that they have created, invented, and you know, bought, whatever, acquired. Uh, they stand at three trillion eighty-five billion dollars. Whoopsie! Microsoft is the biggest company on earth. Microsoft is like a market cap is like four times of Nigeria or five times of Nigeria. That's why when you see Bill Gates enter any African countries, everybody could do like this. Ah, they could run after him because <laughs> he can pretty much just buy the African company and turn it to one of his, you know, uh, uh, products. So um, after Microsoft is Apple, uh, it took Microsoft actually about about. 25 plus years, close to 30 years to get to 1 trillion market cap. It took Apple about 30 years plus to get to 1 trillion market cap. But Apple today stands at 2.9 trillion market cap. I mean, 2 trillion, 9 plus billion dollars. Of course, they are both United States of America companies. Now, between Microsoft and Apple is about 50 plus years to get to where they are today. NVIDIA, you know, NVIDIA is really doing well because one of the reasons why NVIDIA is doing well is because of the chips that they are producing. Uh, the, 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 their, their product is used mainly in AI. And of course, on the blockchain, lots of people are using it. Bitcoin miners basically use NVIDIA, you know, chips. So NVIDIA is doing well, 2.6, 2 trillion, 6 196 billion dollars market cap, so that's top three. It's also a United States of America company. Google, uh, their parent company is called Alphabet, 2.1 trillion dollars. Google is m way more than 30 years old, I want to believe, and it took them about 20 years to get to the level where they are today. So, if we just count one, two, three, four, five, number five will be Saudi Aramco, is an oil company and a lot of stuff that they do. They're into real estate, whatever, engineering, uh, Saudi Aramco. Uh, that's uh, the fifth company on top of the list, and they are worth 1.8 trillion US dollars. So before the fifth company, which is Saudi Aramco, they are 
top four companies from the USA. I never see company from Africa. I don't even think a company in Africa is on top 100. So pay attention, my people. <laughs> to really become wealthy in Africa is, uh, is a big problem. That's because African leaders are not giving us a platform for expression and enabling environment. Africa actually owns the wealth of the world because if you check out most of all of these companies, apart from human capacity development that um, they have above us before now, now I think we have a youth-centric population, especially Nigeria, and we have more human capacity city and um, lots of our young people that are talented and skilled are working in great places um, I think that we have so much resources that has been mined and occupied by some of these guys for a long time so um, so we have Microsoft number one at three trillion Apple number two at 2.9 trillion we have Nvidia at 2.6 trillion alphabet Google at 2.1 trillion Saudi Aramco at 1.8 trillion and of course Amazon at 1.8 trillion. You already know Amazon is not a child. It took Amazon like almost 30 something years to even get to maybe 1 trillion, if not more than that. So all of these companies, it took them uh, nothing less than 25, 30, 40 years. 40 years to, and I'm not talking about a drink, <laughs> to get beyond 1 trillion market cap. Bitcoin is just 14 years old. And it has taken Bitcoin just about 13, 14 years to reach 1.3 trillion in market cap. By the time Bitcoin becomes a 20 years old digital asset class, what do you think will be the market cap of BTC? Now that so many multinationals, uh, asset management companies all over the world, you know, are now engaging in the trading of BTC. Pay attention. Over the weekend, um, Donald J. Trump, ex-president 45th, I believe, of the United States of America, uh, got indicted for his hush money issue. Um, yeah, hush money payment issue, everything around tax. But before then, uh, there was a buzz around Donald J. Trump, which was Donald Trump announcing publicly uh, during his campaign that it would help all Bitcoiners, basically crypto holders of the world, anybody that is interested in crypto, protect their crypto and ensure, categorically mentioned Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, the woman is anti-crypto, I said it would help protect all of us, you and I, I mean, anybody will get crypto, you know, say if US don't make laws like this, if they touch Africa, you know, from uh, your crypto being uh, taken away from you. It was, it was clear about making policies that will favor cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular. But I said, don't, uh, President Biden heard that and he didn't really like that. And, you know, he pushed quickly for the indictment of J Donald J. Trump. And uh, pres President Biden, as we speak, the Joe Biden administration have now... Let me, let me bring out the news. It's very funny. So the Joe Biden administration have done something that is not very, very crypto friendly breaking news president biden vetoes bill that allows highly regulated financial firms to hold bitcoin and crypto you know what this means <laughs> see the main reason for cryptocurrency is financial freedom yeah so vetoing highly regulated financial firms to hold crypto and bitcoin Simply means that, I mean, this is not me trying to be anti anybody. That's just how I feel as somebody who loves cryptocurrency and love freedom money. Simply means that President Biden don't want us to be free with our cryptocurrency. I don't know if my producer can put content on TV, but next week we will still lay emphasis on this conversation very well. But I would like you to do your own research. Do not trust anything I say. Just verify. Um... It makes us basically start to battle everything that will make us free. Yes. Um, it's crazy. There's war on free speech. There's war on free movement. There's war on free... Free everything. Money. Money that you and I will hold. There's going to be great war on it. This cryptocurrency thing is going to be tough in the future. And it's so, it's so serious that it's the most 
sincere way for young people to quickly make money now without too much stress just by engaging in verifiable activities. She's been out one year of some of the shit coins that have been out there. Um, shout out to whatever it is they're doing. Some people cashed out from it. Tap, tap, swap. Tap, 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 tap. Some people got money from it. Name uh, not coin. That one, pure scam, self, but they call it not coin. Some people ca cashed out from it. You know, that's, that's how I feel about some of these things. But, but, but some people got paid. Some people like got liberated from, um, uh, you know, poverty into you know, a level that is a little bit away from that poverty by, by putting in some work and getting some, 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 mo some money. And that's cryptocurrency for you. What is the government doing for us? Minimum wage have not been agreed to. The national anthem has been changed, but our life is not changing. Like, when was I born? What's my business with the old national anthem that wasn't written by Nigerians? I grew up to know our rise or compatriots. But now I have to go and learn one that I don't even understand. You know what I mean? So um, I want to really, you know, solicit. I mean, President Muhammadu Bari has, has left us in a terrible economic shambles that we do not like. President Bola Metinambu, please, you have to wake up. Um, we, we like some of your policies, but it's not impacting our lives. It's not impacting our lives at all. And this is also to um, say that the cryptocurrency industry sector, emerging industry in Nigeria, can really boost the Nigerian economy. So you, you, we need to start paying attention to this sector more, more, more and more, and, and bringing people together and not making decisions at the top. The true players that you're looking for that will help you sanitize the space if you have their data are the players on the streets, right? And the exchange companies that are operating locally and, of course, internationally. Uh, I would also use the opportunity to speak to the, the, the newly appointed DG. Shout out to Dr. Timia Gama. He has now been um, screened and, of course, you know, approved officially and declared the substantial DG of the SEC. We need those licenses out as quick as possible, sir. I know you are doing so much, but we need them out quickly. And we need to understand what tear all of us go fit, you know, uh, go fit put in for. You know, it's not everybody that can, uh, that can afford the 150 million naira for a license. Ask yourself at home. If you have 150 million naira, will you go and give it to the federal government? How many P2P players will go and give 150 million naira for a license to the federal government? And this is a decentralized space. The blockchain space is very difficult to, to clamp down, especially because there is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system like Bitcoin. You may be able to use force on some of the SEX, centralized exchanges. The DEX are even worse. But, you know, Bitcoin is basically everything that the central bank is not. So people can send money peer-to-peer. -peer. If they run a load, you're in trouble. But you can let people participate in the market by lowering the barrier to entry. You know, 50 million naira is too much. Baba, I beg. It's too much. Let's do for the players on the streets $1,000, maybe 1 million naira. Maybe 1 million naira for anybody that wants to do peer to peer. People can quickly go and take loans, you know, from friends and family or the bank, and, and they can establish it. Like the POS business. Look at how the POS business has really liberated people from poverty. People have started POS business and are making money, although it has a side effect, which has made uh, buying cash very expensive, but it also fosters the cashless Lagos, cashless economy of Nigeria, um, you know, vision and mission objective of the central bank. It's just that every good thing also have its negative side. But one person to say, hallelujah, another person could not shout, yay. <laughs> so that, that's how, that's how dicey this whole thing is. It's a two-edged sword. But please, sir, some companies may be able to pay the one uh, 50 million Naira for registration and provide a one billion naira um, um, working capital in cash or in asset class. But what about the young players that they, the, the transaction they do no pass one thousand, two thousand dollars, you know, daily or weekly? Where they want to see one hundred fifty million naira? If they see ten million, they go use and do peer to peer trade. We're gonna go turn to hundred million between one month. They will not come and give it to you. <laughs> but I will tell you not be true. You are my top boss, so. Um, I just feel that you know we should we, sh we should attend to that. It's very very important because that is what is stifling innovation in this space. Lots of people want to invest in cryptocurrency, but they are scared. They are scared. 
And I keep announcing that cryptocurrency is not banned in Nigeria. But as it stands, it looks as if it is. Because people don't even know where to buy. People don't know where to exchange. And that's why the government is not taking its own money. First of all, the 10% capital gain in the new finance act signed into law by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is too much. It's too much. It, the earlier we review that tax law for the capital gain tax on, I mean, chargeable assets like cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and bring it down to like 2%, people will pay. Should I mean go make $1 million for Bitcoin bull market? I can't give government 10%, $100,000. Ah! Your Excellency, sir. <laughs> I will evade that tax and run to El Salvador. <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God. I, I, and, and lots of people that have bags. People have $20 million in their account. They will not give government $2 million. It's crazy. I think we should start small and, and keep the barrier to entry very, you know, very encouraging for the players because the people in this space are young people. Not be all the old men, we don't chop money, finish. Now we they try to bring them into the space. You know, the young people out there want to turn their money to something. The money don't work in the bank. The money in the bank debases. It loses value all the time. Inflation is killing us. Inflation is killing us. It's a terrible time to be a Nigerian. You cannot earn 100,000 naira in this country and successfully feed well and go to work and wear clothes and even have a relationship. You cannot. They don't bond you well. A minimum wage has not even been agreed to at 60,000 naira. 30,000 naira some states are not paying. That's why crypto is doing so much in our country. The other day I was at the SEC with the bereaved change guys. They are also having problems. Where will they see, where will they see dollar? The central bank is giving them dollar week in, week out, like children. You take 10,000, you take 10,000. When people are doing USDT transaction in, in their room, in Sunday morning in church or in the middle of the night in the club or Friday night, hundreds of thousands of dollars, peer-to-peer -peer guys without any license. We need a town hall with no bala blue. 774 local government. Send message to your local government chairman. Announce to every constituency who is doing cryptocurrency. All the young men. Tell the landlords and the and to tell their tenants, ah, this is not war against cryptocurrency. We want to hear from you. Street to street. Bring people together. Make people sit down. Youth organization. Make they discuss this crypto matter. Nigeria can be earning as much as 10, 20 million dollars in revenue generation to the FG monthly from crypto. And that's foreign exchange because it is interoperable with any currency. My Naira, if I can't go Kotonu for there, it's useless at the border. And this is what we're talking about. We don't have policies that favor cryptocurrency in our country. Do you know how many multi-millionaires have been breathed in this country because of crypto? If it wasn't for Bitcoin, I would not be here on national TV. Of course I have been on national TV for some time, you know, for many years in the past. But I've left television for almost a decade. But I'm back to television now, educating people at home. If it wasn't for Bitcoin, it wouldn't be. So it's something that I think that we really, 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 really need to start talking about. I, I don't... I don't understand why today like this, one state has not declared that, yes, we are buying cryptocurrency and we are putting it on our, uh, we're putting it in our balance sheet. Look at Kenya. Marathon Odin, a, 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 a cryptocurrency company in the, in, in the US, have now signed a deal to incentivize wasted energy, convert it to money, with the Republic of Kenya. In the presence of the president, the president of, the, of Kenya, our neighbor here, I've signed that all the energy that they are wasting in their country should be used to mine Bitcoin and, and, and lots more. What are we waiting for? Is it until you know, young people start doing some other crazy things. You know, the, 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 the BDCs that are proliferating the streets have not even been stopped. The cops pass them by. They don't want to arrest them. They are still there. You said no street trading. You have banned street tra trading over and over again. But people are still trading openly on the streets. But today, SEC and NSA has taken down uh, uh, Nigerian... Naira from the peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. So if you want to trade in Nigeria Naira now, you cannot see it on the peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. 
which is making people think that the business is not going to be viable in Nigeria or it's not safe doing cryptocurrency. And then you're chasing the business to Ghana, to, to Republic of Benin, to our neighbors. And who told you because you took NGN away from the P2P market that people will not be able to transact in NGN? It will get worse. And you will have the proliferation of Bitcoin and crypto peer-to-peer -peer transaction if this is not money. People don't know when to call you. They call you on national TV when I'm expressing myself. And if it's not money transaction, I will block you. So, at the end of the day, I lost the trend of my thoughts. Okay, we're going to go for a quick break. When I come back, <laughs> when I come back, we'll keep talking. <laughs> it's the Digital Asset Show. Let me gather my thoughts very, very well and come back to you guys. Then we'll, then we'll roll it up. Yes, we're back. Uh, please, my producer, put the phone number on the screen so that people can call me. Um, I told you last week that we're going to be buying your digital asset live on television, Bitcoin, and USDT. It's very, very important that I show you how these trades are done. I want a situation whereby, uh, you know, we can actually start showing the government how these things are done. There's, there's lots of revenues that the government is losing, right? But it starts from you and I, the willingness to actually make our transaction open. So if you uh, have questions about cryptocurrency, blockchain transaction, whatever it is, there's a phone number on your screen. You should be able to call me. Uh, and then there is a QR code. I believe it will be on the screen pretty soon. It's on the screen as we speak. Yes. So scan that QR code and you will enter my direct message here. It's a WhatsApp QR code. I will see you here. Only if you want to trade cryptocurrency small large volume and this transaction is going to be kyc it is going to be open there's no side mago mago transaction because uh we're gonna have to pay our taxes and all of that this that we're doing on national tv is innovative is new you remember this four or five years from now when there are multiple programs that are doing this right what was i talking about yeah i was talking about the crypto landscape in nigeria um, and there is really no formidable organization that can interact with the government. Shout out to Nita once more. There is already a national blockchain policy, but are we implementing it? Young people are creative, right? And people truly, truly want to invest in this space. I, for one, <laughs> major venture capital for my business. But you see, the biggest problem is policy inconsistency our policies are like this it's not stable for crypto it's just always to the top and down we don't know exactly where we're going to it may feel like bastardized everything and now it's clear the type of CBS governor that it was please mr cardoso you are a lagos man you know that lagosians are very um special people in nigeria and of course nigerian young people in general all nigerian young people kind of have a lagos type of mindset and a lagos city boy is at the ends of affairs president bola metinebo this crypto thing no be scam some people they scam yes if you really really want to cleanse that space you need to call people to the table there are no registered uh, le legal inside the law organization for now but there are organizations in different places if you really really really, really want to do stuff right? You will reach out openly, open town hall. One or two organizations, yes, come together. But anybody that wants to do cryptocurrency in the country, let's have an open call. Let people go to a particular website or go and fill the name of their company, uh, uh, the what they think their market cap is, or, or the volume that they feel that they can do. All of those things, they submit, they show interest. Maybe at the SEC level. You understand? And the NSA can be a part of that too. We cannot be doing this thing in the heat in at the back door. You'll be losing revenue. People will be cashing out. People will be making money. So people will be getting scammed too, you know? And uh, yeah. So please, we need to start talking about this at the National Assembly level. And of course, the Federal Executive Council level. So I want you to call me. Please put the number on the screen. Call me. Let's talk about money. Let's talk about Bitcoin. Let's talk about transactions. Uh, let me know what what exactly 
you have ever been through. Has somebody ever scammed you in this space? Have you done trade before that you had an issue? Let me know. If you want me to call somebody out for you, we're going to have to do very dark man on that person. We can do it successfully. <laughs> we'll go investigate them before we do that. Too. Nobody will get secret for inside their, inside their um, uh, cupboard. But uh, for me, what we're trying to do is to educate you. You know, exactly. Oh, I got a call. All right, beautiful. So who is on the line? Pop Central DSTV channel 189. Olua Shegon on DAS. Who are you and where are you calling from? Is that a drop call? Is that a drop call, please? Okay, so I think I lost that call. Okay, um, please still call me. Put the number on the screen. I, I want to communicate with my listeners, my viewers. Uh, you want to buy Bitcoin, you want to know what the government is doing, you have a mining business, you want to expand, you need a VC, I have people I may be able to plug you into, you want to learn skills. One thing that I really need to tell young people is the job opportunity in the crypto space is big, is big, and you can just be in your house with your laptop or with your phone and manage a crypto community and be earning $1,000 weekly. At the end of the month, it's $4,000. Okay, they, you, you are not so very skilled. They can be giving you $300 weekly. You know, yeah, and and you'll be shocked how you how you'll be able to, you know, be cashing out weekly. People paying you for just advertising their product, right? In the wait, hold on. In the crypto space, as we speak today, you can be a community manager, you can be a sales representative, you can be you can be you can be a key opinion leader. That they're called KOLs, right? Those people are actually making a lot of money on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook, on TikTok. All you need to do is to educate yourself about a particular cryptocurrency and you subscribe to become one of their KOLs and, 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 and they'll pay you for your services, for real. This is the era that looks like the digitization of the broadcast media. You know that digitization of the broadcast media era, 2012, 13, 14, 15, boom, and all of a sudden, all those things you used to see on television be, uh, bec became social media content. And social media content creators started making more money than TV people. If not before, this show could not get bastard ads. <laughs> anyway, the reason why we don't have lots of ads is because, you know, um, it's not so much of a regulated space and we're looking for people who their vision aligned with ours and we're not taking cheap fees. We, we, we need capable ads. So, um, yeah. Very soon, we're going to be having ads, right? We're very strict here. It's not like the offers are not coming. So you can really, really earn money in this space. You can be an educator. You can be an ad, uh, you can be doing advocacy, you know, for Bitcoin companies, for other crypto companies, if you're interested, if that's what you're interested in. Not even the ones in Nigeria. From outside the country, I know more than 30 friends that are doing that right now. Uh, but you must have basic cryptocurrency knowledge, blockchain knowledge, and that starts with Bitcoin. It doesn't end at Bitcoin, but it starts with Bitcoin. If you are in the Web3 space, you have zero knowledge about BTC, they are not ready. Everybody on earth, I repeat, everybody in this country, in Nigeria, let's even localize it. In Nigeria, we buy one crypto or the other between now and 2030. You cannot escape it. Zoom out. Stop looking at the fact that the, the chart looks like, like it's dwindling now. Zoom out and look at the growth trajectory. Especially of Bitcoin. It's like this. It goes up. It doesn't come down. It goes up. Even if it is like this. If you zoom out, it goes up eventually. You know, so you can't, you can't be thinking of today. You think of the future. You start from the kind of car you drive today. Are you driving a brand new car today? How many Nigerians are driving a brand new car? How many cars are in Nigeria? How many brand new cars? How many Tokumbo? People are driving 10, 15, 20 years old car in Nigeria as we speak. How many brand new fashion houses are in Nigeria? Do we have legitimate LV stores, Gucci stores, Versace stores in Nigeria? No, you have to go to Dubai before you see all those things. So we don't have Benz stores. We don't have like Toyota stores you can walk in and customize Toyota. Yeah, we have Toyota franchises here and there. Yeah, so we're really not making anything in Nigeria, which is really affecting our economy. We're not earning money like that. 
diaspora remittance is reducing through the verified channels, they are going to a crypto. And that crypto part, you never you know, you, 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 you never you never start to regulate. Now you make them collect one BTC where they're supposed to give one big brother person where they never give them since aha, that reminds me. Shout out to multi choice DSTV. They gave us the platform so we can't really talk about that much. But we can talk about Big Brother Nigeria and their sponsors. Now this is not about the the show is about the sponsor and their promises and the winner. Now, how does this concern me? Because it is Bitcoin in the first place. I see this young lady crying on, 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 on social media. She got millions of followers. She, Thierry, oh, I won one BTC when it was 13 million. They have not given it to me. I want BTC today is almost 100 million naira. If you say I win something. You, you know, can't give me the thing. You go pay me, or maybe I'm supposed to win 10 items. You gave me seven or eight. The main one, you did not give to me. You have already made her popular. And then you gave her some stuff. You didn't give her the main bag. You could have given her that BTC that time. Maybe she never spent it. Maybe she hold on. And now you haven't given her that BTC because she keeps crying every day. Now, it may not be our business, but this is the Digital Assets Show. And we want to use this opportunity to let people know that this is one of the safest space to do transactions because transactions can be seen. If you have moved the Bitcoin to her, show us the wallet, we'll see it. And she can move it to our own non-custodial custodial wallet. We don't have to see it. And it's so unfortunate that it's, it, it, it's uh, co coming from a company that I kind of know the founder or the co-founder, Quidax Bucci, is a guy that I know. I've never met him on a one-on-one, -on -one, but we've done millions of Naira transactions. And I'm saying it right, like, live right now on national television. That's one of the people who is making crypto do well in Nigeria, right? Because um, of the availability of their liquidity. The liquidity, you know, it's not bad at, at Quidax. You know, I've done Bitcoin transaction with the, with the co-founder of Quidax before. And without meeting him, I sent, I sent him money for about three Bitcoin or something. I even forgot, Seth. And I even called me, say, Alpha, what's up? But it was very nice. And it was legit. It was, it, it, that's how I li like their company. But, to now hear that the company is owing one BTC to a popular person like, uh, what's her name, Fina, who won the BB Niger of her season, is a little bit denting to the crypto space because it, it kind of feels like a bank, for example, UBA. I love UBA so much. I like to mention UBA because I, I built the Aspire Banking application for UBA. So a bank intentionally, you know, not giving the winner of say, Project Fame or one of these reality TV shows, Voice of the... Is it Voice of the Streets? <laughs> voice, voice of the, the Voice Nigeria. Whatever it is, not giving the winner the price. Now, you've made the winner so popular. Their lifestyle has changed. They can't be themselves ordinarily any longer and they need money to take care of themselves. I think that you have deprived that young lady so far of actually having the best assets in the world timely. I think that if the SEC don't step into this matter and help cleanse this space by calling Quidax to order and saying, look, hey, Bucci and the rest, what exactly is going on? Fina, what exactly is going on? And, you know, shout out to DSTV one, one more time, Multi Choice and Big Brother Nigeria and everybody come together and say, hey, 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 look, you are a sponsor or you were a sponsor on our show. Give this girl her money. And, and, and don't dent our show no more. And, and let her come out and say, I've collected the money. And SEC say, we have done uh, the needful. People will trust Nigeria. They will trust the space. It's messing the crypto space up. Now you make David do go do meme coin. Made almost half a million dollars. And dumped on his fans. Shout out to OBO. <laughs> OBO just wanted to cash out. That money is nothing to OBO, I, I, I suppose. You know, it probably will be money for champagne, more chains, more luxury. Or you might just want to do good and give it to underprivileged people. But then that's taking from the poor and giving to the poor. You know? I, I kind of feel that the SEC needs to step in. A lot of people frowned at what David did. A meme coin we all know is scam coin. But why should David... 30 bit, you don't come for me. This is just between you and all of us. I mean, let's be sincere. Why should Davido, a reputable brand like that, top 
top class brand representing not just Nigeria, Africa. Presidents of nations want to meet David O. I mean, I, used, I, I interviewed David O more than three, four times when I was, you know, doing entertainment stuff. So shout out to D David. I like David's music. But I do not openly fuck with what David did. He launched a meme coin and then a lot of people invested in that meme coin with no proper utility, with no proper business sense behind it. Uh, to, uh, to be short of words, I'm, I'm trying to be very careful so I don't say the wrong things. So we need the SEC to be more active and not clamping down on people where they try to find waiting them go chop. The people where they do things, where they mess up the space. That's what some people go do Wakanda, you know, the other time. We never catch them till today. They do Wakanda, you know, people go buy and people, people lost money. You know how many people that use their school fees to buy that David O's meme? David O probably just wanted to do stuff to encourage the blockchain ecosystem. Only God knows the type of pitch they gave to him. And I don't know what the PR guys for David are doing. Are they paying attention to this thing? Is it until lawsuits start coming and David will start to pay times 10 of the money he made? These lawsuits will come. The lawsuits went against Floyd Mayweather in the US, Kim Kardashian, Christian Ronaldo. Go and check the fine that they paid. Nobody saying you should not engage in this sector. But engage carefully and engage rightfully. Now David has done it now. Do you know how many artists go do them? Everybody wants to say David made half a million. I mean, if I feel make $200,000, I feel make $300,000. And you know, Nigeria, once per one person do them, they don't go rest. Artists go first do them plenty. Then if all these kids make us come and do that same thing, chai! They go scatter them, them Sydney, talk to them, uh, Shank, uh, Mr. Macaroni, all those people. Then go scatter, meme coin go full everywhere. Because just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys will be buying benzins and houses. Why people are losing their money, their hard-earned money. Because a lot of people don't even understand. They just believe in the influence of, in the, influence of, 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 of the celebrities. By now, we should have seen a press release from the SEC. Boom. Strongly putting a stern warning. Or making a stern statement. Categorically against the investment in this type of things. Not chasing all people who want to do P2P. We never get one or 50 million out to pay for registration. <laughs> this space, Nigerian government, you people will try, you, you will try, and you may just mess up this whole thing. And Tinubu will just do four years, and they will not be able to do anything in the crypto space. His name will just get battered by the young people. Somebody that is 16 years old today, in another three years will be 19 years old. In good on wise, 17 years old, don't be 20 years old. These guys need money. People want to feed their seeds, their parents, send themselves to school. People don't even want to go to school again. They want to acquire skill. Ordinary $30, you cannot pay online. You will have to carry your Naira to go and buy dollar outside. Just look at the stress. You cannot go to the bank and buy dollar. In the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 220 million plus people. Look at how educated and exposed our young people are. Forget about the people, kids that are out of school, and I'm not encouraging that. Yes, government should take care of that, and there are some of their parents, hopefully. But let's talk about the people that are highly skilled. You want to pay for a cost of $9. You can't pay with your Naira Visa MasterCard. You have to use virtual card. Those ones have <laughs> charges crazy. The proper way to get dollar in this country is to go and buy dollar from the streets, from unlicensed BDC. No, no, they talk for corner. Let's say, as they talk for corner, I'm not this serious. Unlicensed Biru, they change everywhere, all over Lagos, all over Nigeria. You keep saying you're clamping down on them. You pass the streets, you don't, you even ch some of the government change money from them on the streets. You change money from the unlicensed BDCs on the streets. Why don't you go to Ikeja and go and pack them? Come to Lekki, pack them in Lekki too. Raid them. Let's know that you're raiding people, not Yahoo boys, and you turn their back, show laptop and Toyota Corollas. You say you have caught people, you're doing fraud. Let's get serious. You will have the proliferation of crypto, and money will move and move and move, and people will become banks in their houses without license, and you will be shocked, and you will not make one error from it. So um, I, I, I plead with the Federal Republic 
of Nigeria's government to call like a national order an executive committee, put together an executive committee on blockchain and cryptocurrency matters. Separate it from Bitcoin. If you go put together that blockchain, eh, make sure that you have somebody Bitcoin inside of it because some of the blockchain people, they are scammers. Many of them, they collect money from foreign companies. They go and buy land here and say that they have opened one uh, learning center to bring more foreign companies in. And then taking away the market from the local companies. The local companies don't even have opportunity to get funded. At the end of the day, the banks are the ones that will buy the, the crypto licenses and put their stooge there. And they don't understand it yet. Inera is not taken off. Inera is already dead, except the government revived it. And billions of naira were spent on Inera. Why can't I just convert my Naira to E-Naira and convert it to Bitcoin. Simple. Do you know how many people will use E-Naira all over the world? If E-Naira is a distributed ledger technology money, why can't E-Naira be used like USDT all over the world? It's GovCoin. It's a surveillance coin. Government wants to see everything you're doing. But the free markets don't want that. The free market wants privacy. But Inera could have been a Trojan horse. It would have allowed Inera to be interoperable with all this cryptocurrency exchange. Let people be able to just buy Inera, convert it to Bitcoin, convert it to USDT, convert it to any kind of coin. That's what's supposed to be happening. All of this that I'm saying now will become history in the future, and I know some of you will remember. Give me a call from any part of the country, any part of Africa, and let's talk about this. Let me know what you what you think about all of these things. What I don't put forward now. Since this show has started, almost two seasons down now, it's been one complaint or the other. We we are not. We can't even have a smooth one month of stable policy in the cryptocurrency space. What is the government doing? For real, what are you doing? We can bet multi billion dollar companies. In three years, in, in 72 months, not one, not two, not three, not four. Quickly, in the crypto space, we don't even have our own innovation on the coin market cap. How many Nigerian companies have crypto on the coin market cap? Bitcoin, no be Nigerian, do I'm on. Satoshi Nakamoto, not your father, not my father. We don't even know him, he's a pseudonymous character, which we love the innovation. Ethereum, was innovated by a young 16, 17 years old boy. Ethereum that we're all dying for. And that's the mother, uh, mother of Tether, which is the USDT that we're all using. USDT on Tron. Who owns Tron? Young, young boys in the West. Now they get all these things. People just invested in them. Solana, everything. Go to coin market cap right now. You will not see one Nigerian product on top 2,000. So we have sold out already. Even our government are buying USDT, buying Bitcoin. No, no, no one innovation there. We, we, do, we own nothing. We don't even innovate. We don't create matches in our country. I feel like kicking my laptop. It's painful. And you are blocking the people that are doing the, 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 the business. They say they are using it for money laundry. What the F? When, when did the Bitcoin white paper come up? Come online. 2008, 2009. That's the first time we ever heard of our Bitcoin. Before that time, they've been moving billions of dollars all over the world with cash. I mean, our Bitcoin been millions of dollars. What they see for Ikoi? The one we they see for Ghana must go for inside airport. Uncle. Was it BTC? Governments of nations have been stealing money all over the world. Politicians have been stealing money with cash worldwide. The fines that banks have seen the fines that have been imposed on banks for doing one wrong thing or the other is, is practically almost half of the entire cryptocurrency market cap. And I'm not talking about Bitcoin, you know, the entire crypto, almost a trillion in fines in the history of banking worldwide. So there's more fraudulent activities in fiat, paper money. 
We can't do that. We can't do that. As I round up the show, it's very, very important that every senator, every representative, honorable member, every councillor, from the local government level to the state to the federal level, should start to learn about blockchain. It should be something we should teach in schools, religious places, artisan organization. It's very, very important, especially cryptocurrency, because that is what most people are doing now. That's the only way people are engaging in MGU. Money go up. Put T for back. Money go up technology. Another A, activity. MGUAT, money go up ac technology activity. You see some of the withdrawals people do in the bank, they go and put it in crypto companies. Allow these transactions happen. Interoperate between crypto and banking and see how the economy will boost. You will see that some of us have network that can become great networks. Some of us have connections internationally that are, that are willing to come if the policies are favorable. Please, 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 our businesses are dying fast because there is no policy favoring us. Some people are leaving the country, going to Estonia, going to El Salvador. People are running to Kenya now. The president of Kenya stood right there with a crypto company saying, going forward, we will be mining crypto in my country, Bitcoin, with wasted energy. All the energies you are wasting up and down there, why are you not converting it to Bitcoin and incentivizing it? You spend 100,000 naira on energy. Maybe you actually use like 60,000 naira. The 40,000 naira, the, the entire 100,000 naira as you are using it, you're practically wasting most of it. Maybe owning all the lights and not using it for anything. If you plug Bitcoin miners to those lights and they, go, they generate some small, small things for you, that's what they call incentivization of <laughs> electricity. Bitcoin. It's proof of work. You do the work, you see the rewards. Anyway, that will be my show for today. I hope you guys had a nice time with me. I didn't really come to laugh that much. I have so many news I would have shared with you, but uh, what, what's the benefit of reading out news in the West and everywhere? This one, do this one for Singapore. This one, do this one for Hong Kong. Lots of good and bad news everywhere. But it's a race of who is going to have more Bitcoin. Individuals, organizations, and nations. It's a race of who is going to create an enabling environment the most for this technology to thrive. Look at how Nollywood has done well for Nigeria. Afrobeats. Now, so they're begging, they're begging, they're begging, they're making their airports with Afrobeats that time. People will go cry, then Charlie Boy and the rest of them will go and cry at Alaba. Thanks to technology and the innovations around it, Alaba died a natural death. If we are not careful, my last words, if the government is not careful and they don't step in as proper leaders, that want to help the young people of this nation succeed. The same thing that happened to that business, we know the year word, Alaba business, will happen in the banking sector. Because the banking sector, they know the year word. <laughs> I'm not going against any bank, or I'm not against any bank. But if you don't want the banks to be taken out, and the crypto companies actually coming forward without you enforcing it. Naturally, the banks will die a natural death. Young people will just leave the banks. And we have more young people in Nigeria. 70% of Nigerian population are young people. You will just see that all of them just the good crypto companies. And even the bankers themselves will turn their companies to maybe event centers and fashion houses or eateries and convert most of their liquidity to crypto. Food for thought. That's another episode. I'll catch you next week. Oluwa Shegun is my name. I want to give a shout out to all my team members. Thank you very much, CJ, my producer. Shout out to Pop Central for giving me this opportunity. No other channel have so far. So thank you, DSTV. And um, all over Africa watching me, if you feel my pain, send us a message. Reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, anytime. I'll be willing to respond to you. Every member of my team, I thank so much. Uh, next week, I'll be making special announcements and bringing more juicy news. Do not go nowhere. Better programs, more interesting ones 
will be popping on your screen as soon as this very, very interesting one stops. Das, we'll be right back next week. Udabo.